Hi, John. It's uh, Liam here from the Derbyshire Times. Hi, Good Liam. Um, did, did John explain his reasons to you as to why he felt he couldn't take this team any further? No, not really. John, John spoke to the chairman and uh, obviously that's a private conversation. I have spoken to him, but I, I believe... I believe that should be kept private and personal. Were you surprised at the decision that the, the chairman and, and the manager came to, to to walk away after eight games? I was, yeah. I must admit, I was surprised, yes. Uh, and what's the mood like within the camp? Because obviously the manager was well respected by all of the players and well liked. Um, you know, what's the mood like being like in training so far? The, the mood has been all right. The uh, the managers had a lot of uh, telephone calls from players, uh, speaking about the disappointment that he has left. But uh, they're all professionals, and the training's been quite good. They've been bubbly this morning. It's good yesterday. Uh, we prepared this morning for the game, and, and they've been fine. What do you think are the reasons why? Um, it's been such a disappointing start to the season. What would you put it down to? It's fine margins, I, f I believe. Uh, as we said, we've, we've lost goals by lost games by the odd goal. Could be lack of concentration, people not doing jobs. Uh, but it's not just about defending; it's about the other end as well. Not taking opportunities that that we've created, and. People say you make your own luck in this game, but uh, I think really we haven't had a lot of luck at the moment over the last eight games. So uh, we've got to keep working hard, we keep believing in and saying that the, the tide will change and hopefully it will tomorrow. Do you think there's enough quality within this squad to turn it around or do you think that some new additions will have to come in as, as, if they can? Well, I think that's been uh, well documented. We're always on the lookout for, to improve the squad. And I've said before, whether you're top of the league or, or suffering near the bottom of the league, you're always looking to improve your squad. I think any manager or coach would, would tell you the same thing. Uh, when a new manager is appointed, would you like to potentially stay on at the club and, and offer your services to the new manager? Well... At the moment, I'm employed by the football club. Similar to John, I came in with John and he asked me to sign a one-year contract. And that's what I've done at the moment. So I'll just honour my contract and, and see what happens. And in terms of tomorrow's game against Notts County, are you thinking about making many changes? Obviously, I know you won't want to give too much away to the opposition, but will you be making some changes from Tuesday night? Yes, there'll be changes. Tomorrow, yeah. And something that which has been spoken about a lot is, a, you know, a potential formation change, whether three at the back is working or not. Is is that something that you might have a look at? We've we've uh, played certain systems uh, throughout the season so far, and we've we've tinkered with it on several occasions. So I won't say it's the system that's let us down. Uh, but yeah, we'll see tomorrow. We'll see. And we've already touched upon um, you know, the new goalkeeper, Corey Adai, who, who performed pretty well in midweek. It must must be a bit of a whirlwind few days for him, coming in yeah. at the last minute, playing a game, and then the manager leaving the next day. Yeah. Have you spoken to him and <laughs> how's he? You couldn't write a script for the boy, could you? I mean, uh, he came in at short notice and uh, he was good. He mixed in really well with the boys. He's trained really well uh, with David O'Hare. He's, he's, he's adapted really well. He's, uh, he's quite laid back. He uh, seems a good character. And uh, I think we've got a good keeper to take Kyle, Kyle's place, who, who's obviously ill at the moment. So uh, we'll take that as it comes. And, and just on team news... Uh, Liam Mandeville's obviously been missing for a few weeks. He's been self-isolating. Is he, uh, you know, ready to perhaps come back into the squad now if if you choose to? 
yeah, Liam will be in the squad tomorrow. Everybody's in, in the squad tomorrow. Everyone who's fit. Thanks for your time, John, and good luck tomorrow. Cheers, Liam. Thank you. Appreciate that. Hi, John. Hi. And, um, just the one from me, the shop. I'm Holly. I'm from Spy Radio. Um, so, Chesterfield haven't struggled to uh, scoring goals this season. Um, it's more been keeping them out, which which seems to have been one of the issues. Um, do you think if a new manager comes into the club, they'll be able to change that with the same set of players? Or do you think new signings will have to come in the club to, to stop those goals being conceded? I think that's a, it's a matter of opinion, isn't it? Uh... Every, every manager and coach have different ideas. Uh, whoever comes in will obviously look at videos from, from our games and probably know certain players from previous jobs or encounters. So I'm sure different managers will want to change different things, whether it be di uh, personnel or formations. Thanks for your time, John, and good luck tomorrow. Thanks very much, Ollie. Thank you. Oh, John, it's uh, Ian from the Elastic FM. Hi, Ian. Um, Are you all right? I, I'm fine, thank you. Good. Um, you've come in a very difficult time, of course. <laughs> of course. Uh, perhaps you could uh, give some of our listeners who may not be aware of your past uh, a quick resume of your career up to this point. Right, his coaching career? Yeah. Uh, well, all of it, really. Yeah. Well, I was an ex-football league player. Played for uh, Huddersfield Town. That was my first club. Played for Oldham. I moved on to Aldershot. We were in the fourth division at the time. Oldham were in the second division. Then I moved to Shrewsbury. Who were in the second division uh, at the time. And then I moved up to uh, finish my career at Rotherham. That's where I'm from. And then uh, towards the end of my coaching, uh, playing career, I took my coaching badges and then I joined uh, Sheffield United under, in the Dave Bassett era. So I went in as a youth development coach and I stayed there for nine years. And then I went to Leeds for three years, working with the uh, academy under 18s, under 19s. Huddersfield, was there for eight years working with the reserves youth team and the first team with Peter Jackson and Andy Ritchie. And I ended up coming back to Sheffield United after having a short spell at Chesterfield, uh, working with Dave Bentley and uh, John Sheridan, Tommy Wright, Mark Crossley. And then I left with them when Paul Cook came in. and. Uh, went back to Sheffield United. So I was there for the last seven years as under-23s coach. So you've had a pretty varied career, really, haven't you? Yeah, I've, had a, I've been fortunate. I've stayed in football throughout uh, from leaving school. and uh, So, yeah, I've got a lot of experience. It's my first time as caretaker manager. So I've been... Involved with first teams, youth teams, under 23s. Um, and uh, you've had a few injuries as well. Um, last Tuesday, you gave Altrincham. Um, it appears that perhaps the defence or the, the midfield criticise or have a go at certain things. I think, uh, as I said earlier, we, we believe it's a team effort and uh, whatever happens, good or bad, we should take responsibility. Do you intend to follow John Pemberton's uh, use of the young players? Certainly. I mean, uh, there are two or three... Uh, possibly four good young players at the club that have come through the academy scheme and they're obviously the future of the club and we've got to be careful when we put them in, how long we put them in for, which games we play them in, we've got to be very careful on their uh, development. Um, you're taking over obviously a very difficult time, how, how have you any specific plans to change things? My plans from the chairman, 
from the board is just to look after the team for this one game and uh, that's what I've done. I've prepared the team what I feel is uh, the right way to prepare them for the game tomorrow and uh, hopefully we get a good result tomorrow and take it from there. Than, than we have. Would you agree with that? That we've not really fully adapted to it? I'm not sure, Ian. Uh, obviously, they've had better results than us this season. That's that's for sure. Uh, they've missed certain games because of the uh, corona. And, you know, they've, they've got a good squad. They've got an experienced squad. They'll... It'll be a tough game tomorrow. We're not expecting an easy game. Uh, no games are easy in any level of football that you play. They're as easy as you make them, you know. This is probably as tough as it gets, really, isn't it? Uh, a local derby and uh, your first match. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah, it is. I mean, it would be even better, as I said earlier, but to have uh, seven or 8,000 fans in the ground would be even better. But yeah, we we know what we've got to got to do. The players know what they've got to do tomorrow. They're all prepared. And uh, we just hope we get a good result, positive result for the supporters. Thank you, Ian.